How do two people know if they're in love? Sounds terrible, I know. But Marcy and I have been going out for two years now, and I'm still not sure. We get on okay, but I have this lingering feeling that there's something missing. Is there such a thing as perfect love? And if there is, I wonder what it feels like. Oh. Oh. Sorry, son. Ah, oh, look at this, Marcy. This would have to be the most beautiful place in the world. For God's sake, Simon. It's just a beach full of lumpy, nude bodies and pervy men. I don't know why you insist on coming here. these people? Are they in love? Are they happy? Sad? We're all caught up in our own little worlds. Physically close, yet eons apart in reality. Right. How do you see our relationship? On par with A, Romeo and Juliet, B, Virginia and Leonard Wolfe, or C, Fred and Rosemary West? I don't know. None of those. Don't be indecisive. Well, we should have some role model. Ma and Pa Kettle? <laughs> You're out of date. Homer and Marge Simpson? <laughs> Romeo and Juliet. In the event of a nuclear catastrophe, coupled with worldwide famine, Chinese mobilisation and liberal leadership, would you A. Commit Hari Kiri, B. Run for office, or C. Fly to the moon? I don't know how you can believe in such crap. Leave her alone. It might happen, who knows how love works. Oh, come on, her grandmother gives her a pendant on her deathbed and whispers, Gail, this will lead you to love. She didn't necessarily say it would lead me to love. She said she was wearing it when she met Grandpa and she wanted me to have it. I think it looks really nice. Love is war. Men are the enemy. True to me? Keep them keen, that's what I always say. Otherwise they trample all over you. How can you be so cynical? I think love's precious. Men are just as fragile as us. Oh, well, every guy I've ever been with has turned out to be a total bastard. So now I just don't give him the chance. Perhaps the planet has some morphic field around it. Maybe the crystal's alive and can sense the vibrations of love when a good man's nearby. That's beautiful. Thank you. What's your name? Daniel. See, Grandma was right. It's working already. <laughs> yeah, I'm six-year-old. It's sending out mighty morphic power range of eyes. Daniel, over here, please. Stop bothering those girls. <laughs> <laughs> Does Grandma have any more of those? <laughs>
Canada. This guy's sitting really close to me. Hey, mate, keep it cool. You know what I mean? Just take it easy. I think he likes me. He's wasting his time. <laughs> What's that supposed to mean? You don't like sex. He'd be disappointed. Sometimes he can be a bastard, Justin. Perhaps if you didn't read so many newspapers, our love life might improve. But what have you got against reading the newspaper? You read the morning papers, the evening papers, the weeklies. You listen to the news in the car. You watch the news on television at 6 p.m. and then again at 10.30 p.m. before you come to bed. <laughs> I don't know what you're trying to find out. There is only a certain amount of events that can happen. It's all rubbish anyway. Have you got your period or something? <laughs> is that in the paper too? Look, I just like to read the paper, okay? here that a recent survey shows that 70% of women will be unfaithful to their partners. Oh, what the? Did you get rid of this pest? Oh, gee, that's a sports section. I haven't read that yet. Look, mate, you're really starting to get on my nerves. Read your paper, Justin. What do you care? All right, that's enough. She's got plenty of cream. I said that's enough. Careful. You've got sand on your hands. Oh, shit. What are you doing? Christ, Jill, stop kissing him! Yeah, why don't you just move on and we call it quits, okay? Come on, this guy's loopy. Let's get out of here. I don't want to. Are you crazy? Maybe. You want to stay with him? I don't believe it. What are you saying? You want to end our relationship? Do you love me? I asked if you love me. Well, I wouldn't be with you if I didn't, you know, care for you. Look, what do you want me to say? I just want to know if you love me. Right. You think saying a few simple words means love? It's what people do for each other. How they treat each other. It's what people buy for each other. That's love. Not saying a few stupid words. Exactly. 
you think buying clothes or flowers for me means love? We never do anything together. You're always watching the news. When I think about it, our relationship is, is lousy. Look, I'm only going to say this once. Are you coming? Because I'm about to leave. And if I do, I won't call you. You got that? I won't call. In fact, I'll never see you again. Are you threatening me? No. I just won't ever see you again. Okay. Goodbye, Justin. Have you lost your senses? This guy could be a mass murderer. He could really fuck you up. I trust him. Now I've heard everything. Boy, I hope you get what you deserve. AIDS. Think you can just pick guys up on the beach? You wake up in the morning and then you realise what you've lost. You fucking slut! She's fucking frigid. Never could orgasm. You know, it really suits me fine that you've taken her off my hands. Christ, I thought I was stuck with her. Just wait until you meet her mother. Oh boy, what a pair. Troubled master, I try to make sense of my life and of the world. I puzzle over all things, looking for order and meaning. But I remain confused. I seek enlightenment, but find only despair. I seek to do good, but remain unable to do anything. I am committed to unravelling the secrets of the universe. You, who are enlightened, already know. Have mercy on me. Tell me, Master, what is the meaning of life? You wish to know the meaning of life? Yes, Master. I will show you what I know. Thank you, Master. Pass me your sandal. This is what I know of the meaning of life. Thank you, Master. started when I told Victor I was leaving him. He begged me to have sex with him one last time. Something to remember me by, he said. <laughs> of course, like a fool, I said yes. You're too nice, Wendy. Victor doesn't deserve you. Mm. So what happened? The bastard put super glue on the end of his dick. What? We were joined together. Him grinning at me, saying we were together for eternity. <sighs> well, I tried to push him off, but it was hopeless. So I rang the police. Of course, they arrested him immediately. Then I realised they couldn't lock him up without putting me away as well. I would have killed him. I tried that. I grabbed a vase from the bookshop and tried to bash his head in. But the police restrained me. So I kept trying to claw his eyes out. And then they handcuffed my hands behind my back. Do you mean the bloody pigs were acting like you were the criminal? Oh, I was so mad I tried to bite his nose off. I actually managed to sever it a bit in the nostril. Then they put a muzzle on me. The bastard should have helped you. Victor went crazy then, so they had to handcuff and muzzle him as well. Well, then an ambulance arrived with an armed guard, and they dragged us off to hospital, screaming and spitting at each other. Neighbours were horrified. God, what a horrible situation. Oh, Victor glued inside of you. Did he still have an erection? No. Policewoman showed him pictures of Andrea Dworkin, so he wasn't getting any pleasure from it. The doctors ruled out an operation because they couldn't get to my cervix. 
So they tried a variety of different industrial solvents. But, I mean, you know what super glue's like. No, I've only ever used Vaseline myself. Well, I wasn't exactly trying to encourage him. Anyway, we were in the same hospital bed for a week, long enough for him to get his erection back a few times. But he couldn't come because the super glue was blocking his urethra. Oh, yuck! Well, the doctors recommended that I keep trying to get him aroused in the hope that eventually the sperm buildup would become so great that he'd literally blow himself clear. Why didn't they just cut his dick off and scrape the remains out? Well, that was my suggestion, but they said it was against their code of ethics. Mind you, it didn't stop me trying. In the end, I had to stop serving us food with cutlery. <laughs> Good on you. Well, it finally came to a head on the Saturday night. Victor was watching flutty summer camp chicks on video, and to drown out the noise, I was watching a documentary about Princess Di's clothes. Did they show the wedding dress? No, it was mainly sportswear. Anyway, just as she was handing Charles a polo trophy, Victor let loose an almighty orgasm and blew himself clear. He lifted into the air like an astronaut firing his retro rockets. I seized my opportunity. I grabbed a syringe I had hidden in my nightdress and I stabbed him in the face. And then the SWAT team ran in and whisked me away. So he has a time of his life and gets away with it? Well, not exactly. He was tried under the Tasmanian Sexual Deviant Practices Act and put away for 15 years. He deserved life. They said that's what he would have got had I been a bloke. But do you know, as they led him away, he smiled at me and called out, it was all worth it. <sighs> that's Victor for you. Unbelievable. Mm. <laughs> Ben, unfortunately out of view means in my nose. Help requires courage. That's right. There's a lot of people there constantly constipated. They spend their lives suffering disease and misery because they lack the courage to part. Fresh air demands respect. So probably a lot of people out there suffering right now. That reminds me. Have you made a decision yet? Leave it, Ben. You've got to face facts. You're not really in love with Marcy. How do I know that? I don't even think I know what love is. No one knows what love is. But anyone can see it's not you and her. Marcy wouldn't agree with you. She says we get on well. We don't annoy each other too much. We shouldn't expect much more than that. Plus our horoscopes are compatible. <laughs> love is a compatibility. It's the passion to live as if death didn't matter. How's that, a great Zen master? Hey, You're not in love with Marcy. You're scared to tell her. You don't want to hurt her right now. So you're going to get married and ruin both your lives. What's the alternative? We've been living together for two years. What am I supposed to do? Just walk up to her and say, I'm sorry, Marcy made a terrible mistake. I'll shift out tomorrow and start looking for a true love. Goodbye. Thanks for everything. Yeah, you got it in work. Monday on nine, double homicide. Hello. It's a nicer day. Down there. She's a very bright, eh? Yes, it's beautiful. Hey, you're very beautiful too. <laughs> Have a boyfriend? Eh, nah, that's a no good. Beautiful woman like you need a good man. <laughs> One day. What about you? Do you have a good woman? Nah, I have a wife. Not of the same thing. Eh? I have lots of money, but a bad wife. <laughs> Why is she bad? She don't like how much sex. She's a very religious. Eh? Me, hey, I'm a full of life. I have too much energy. <laughs> I need a young lover. I have lots of money, eh? I have three jewellery shops. But not good as sex. Eh, 
You know, you're very beautiful. My jewelry should look good on you. I can't afford jewelry. That's no problem. I give you your jewels. I don't think so. Hey, perhaps you're becoming my lover, huh? And I give you your jewels. No. <laughs> What's the matter? Am I too ugly for you? No. You seem quite nice. Look, you come with me, we make a beautiful love, and I give her your diamond bracelet worth $2,000. No, thanks. It's a good deal. One time together, I give you a $2,000 bracelet. You should hire a prostitute. It'd be a lot cheaper. <laughs> Gonna like a prostitute. I'm a good lover. Look, you're the most beautiful girl on the beach, eh? Yeah. Yeah. I watched you here before. You're a good woman. Healthy, fresh. I make her love you good, eh? Yeah. Not like English, there. Yeah, I make you happy to be woman. Uh, I have to go now. Hey, wait, uh, no need to make a love, eh? Just suck me with your mouth. Uh, I'll give you a $5,000 bracelet. Sorry? <laughs> Whatever you want, I give you. Look, I don't want your diamonds. Stop bothering me. You're a dirty old man. I'm sorry, I didn't mean that. It's my fault, eh? I'm sorry. You're very beautiful. I didn't mean to bother you. That's okay. I hope you find someone nice. Don't go yet, eh? I'll give you your money as well, eh? Just to rubber me, make her become, I'll give you a thousand dollar cash, eh? Oh, and a five thousand dollar diamond bracelet? Mm, eh, come with me to my car, eh? <laughs> I'll give them to you. Why? You're a nice girl. You make a girl all happy and I give her your money and diamonds. I got a plenty. Just to rub you? You watching me come? You're paying too much. You do it then? I'll think about it. I want to you. You're very beautiful, eh? What do you got to lose? A few minutes. You watch, I give you a thousand dollars. Look, I like you very much, eh? We go, come, come. What do you say, eh? Maybe another time. Right now, I'm looking for love. Sorry, can't I? So what makes you such an expert on love? You've never been married. That's because I believe in love. Oh, I see. You believe in love, but you've never thought of marrying. No. I never said that. The problem is, love is irrational. And it's perverse enough to avoid you when you need it most. The reason why I've never got married? Love's never come my way. That's life. Maybe if you change your mating call. So, you've given up on love? No. I hope I find it before I die. But I'm not going to compromise myself. I'm going to keep looking till I find the real thing. Have you ever stopped to consider you might just be selfish? Maybe you lack the courage to make a commitment. Maybe love comes once you've made a commitment to another person and out of the dreariness and boredom comes something truly beautiful. <laughs> you believe that crap? I don't know. I don't know what to believe anymore. Maybe I don't think there is such a thing as love. It's all too hard. Uh, don't ever stop trusting in love. Believe in it. It'll come when you least expect it. The problem is, love is irrational. It comes when you don't look for it. Sorry, Kevin. I'm afraid not. He's not right for you. He's not. I mean, I, I wish I could make you understand that... Well, you're too good for him. I've explained it to you already. With Simon, I feel in charge. Powerful. With you, I feel insecure. As though I'm about to lose control. Yeah, well, I like that. Go away. I'm practically married. Do you want to do a quiz? Great. <laughs> I love these. They make you think about... Well, everything. Bloody flies. <laughs> Thanks. 
You constantly amaze me. I mean, you are always so prepared, so completely <laughs> in tune with your environment. It's just common sense to me. Hey, can I ask you a personal question? As long as it's not too personal. Why don't you ever take your bathers off when you come down here? I mean, after all, it is a nude beach. It may be old-fashioned, but I think the body is something private, something special. My body is for my lover only. I'm not interested in letting everything hang out for all to see. Unless, of course, as in your case, you have a lot to hang out. I think you're looking for God in the wrong places. It makes me feel uncomfortable. Keep still. Henry Miller believed that enough concentrated staring at the entrance to the womb might one day produce a transcendent moment of revelation. Henry Miller was a pornographer. I'm seeking enlightenment. You're a perv. I'm on a spiritual quest, a search for God. God is not between my legs. Well, heaven certainly is. worried. You look like you're about to commit a crime, not about to meet the man of your dreams. Uh, Tom, I'd like you to meet Denise. Our computer has analysed all your personal data. According to Sam, you're the perfect match. I'll leave you two lovebirds to get to know each other. Just relax and have a great time. You bastard. What the hell are you doing here? It's clear to see what you're doing here. You're looking for another woman. I should have listened to my mother. What would she say about you being here? I'm doing something that you're incapable of. I'm looking for love. Oh, Jesus, is that my suntan lotion? I was looking everywhere for that this morning. It was you who said our relationship wasn't working. And you were thinking of leaving. Yeah, well, I certainly am now. It's obvious I can't trust you. What's that? Oh, got a banquet in here. You've always told me that it's too much trouble to bring food down here. I was trying to impress. Get it. What a waste of money. Have you paid your $180 fee yet? No, I was going to borrow the money from you. You were going to borrow money from me to meet another man? I would have paid it back. Where'd you get yours? I took it from the rent money. <laughs> what? So you haven't paid the rent? I put it back Friday. I can't understand how you would do this behind my back. You told me that whatever happened, you would always be honest. Oh, don't talk to me about honesty. You said you were going bowling. And you were going to visit poor sick Sally in hospital. She's in a so I wouldn't make much difference. You brought my good beach umbrella to share with another woman. Didn't you see me looking for this? Yes. I had it in my car. I couldn't work out why you wanted it to go and visit Sally. Oh, you make me sick. Bastard. How are we going here? Getting to know each other? We certainly are. One question, Cheryl. If things don't work out between us, do we get a refund? Well, Denise does. But I'm afraid, Tom, this is your last chance. Further introductions will mean another fee. But I've got a special feeling about you two. I haven't been in this business for 20 years for nothing. I feel you two know each other very well. So, how many times have you done this? Once. Maybe twice. Okay, three times. Oh, you creep. You mean, I've had to sit through all that relationship therapy crap, telling the shrink about my uncle feeling me up, when you were telling the computers to look for some dumb blonde with big knockers who has her own unit? You threatened to abandon me, like my mother did when she weaned me and went back to work. You know I never recovered from that trauma. Computer tarts like? They're not tarts. Well, one of them was built like a Harley Davidson. She had some interesting tattoos. The other one was a 52 year old mother of three who smoked and had chronic fatigue syndrome. Well, that's computers, isn't it? Garbage in, garbage out. Hey, you don't exactly snow white yourself, you know. 
If this guy hadn't been me, what were your plans? If he'd been someone handsome and rich and drove a Porsche? Well, I wouldn't have done what you planned to do with a slut you were meeting. I wasn't meeting a slut. I was meeting you. Are you a slut? Of course not. But if I had been someone else, then yes, I would have been. Your, your profile said you were a sweet, old-fashioned girl who was interested in cooking. So? I do all the cooking. You buy takeaway. The only reason I answered your ad was because I thought I might get a decent meal. You criticised my cooking when I shifted in. You, you ruined my confidence. You stunted my creativity. I'm sorry. The rice you cooked was really nice. But I'm used to having something with it. Your ad said that you were a romantic who liked walking in the park. I do. You only ever take me to the football. That's because it's played at football park. You are a cheat and a liar and you're a bastard. And you're a slut. Oh, now, please. All you ever think about is sex. I haven't had any for three months. Of course it's on my mind. Well, I'm not making love to a sex-starved liar. In your case, that rules out masturbation. And now, oh, perhaps... Don't expect me to be at home when you get back. It won't be a problem. I won't be coming home. Why? Got another computer tart lined up? Excuse me, my firm is very reputable. Not with this creep on your books. A creep? All I'm looking for is a little love. Well, what do you think I'm looking for? A man who cooks. And who doesn't fart in bed. There's no such creature. What happened? You're such a sweet girl. Like hell she is. You know she's living with some bloke. Oh, yes, but that's over. She really loved him, but he just didn't care. That's why I thought you'd be right for her. You're not like the others. Others? What others? Well, you're the tenth man she's tried, but she's rejected all of them. Why? Well, she said she wanted one just like her ex, but someone who'd really love her. She said that? She said her ex had emotional impairment and was an incapable of expressing his feelings. Well, you do that really well. I do? I've never met a man who expresses feelings so clearly. In fact, I wouldn't give up. I mean, you've only just met. Perhaps you're right. Trust me. I know a lot about relationships. Denise! Denise, wait! I love you! Hi, Lucy. Hi. The usual? Thank you. What do you think of Lucy? Yeah. Huh? You know how to pick true love? How? It's a physical thing. Your heart pounds. You can't speak. You turn into an idiot. You ever have those feelings with Marcy? No. But that's because we're comfortable with each other. There's no need for that sort of thing. In fact, they get in the way. Really? You look after the van. I'm going to the toilet. Thank God. Gas masks off, everyone. If you don't fart, you don't shit. And if you don't shit, you die. I hate that I'll go in the van. I mean, it's impossible to get an ice cream from him. He never stops. You can't risk falling asleep on the beach because he might run you over. Yes, it's dangerous. Thank <laughs> you. 
stop at my favorite. <laughs> Everything okay? Are you all right? Fine. I think what you've been saying, though, is finally sinking in. Good. Good. You've done well. This is going to improve my reputation on the beach. to get away from the office. Oh, yeah. At least now we might have some time to talk. <laughs> Hello, Sally. Oh, Jason, hi. No, 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 no problem. It's down the beach with Sam. It's relaxing, yeah. What? When? Oh, God, we'll have to do something about this. Charles Simpson just rang and he's taking away the revelation account. No, 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 I'm still here. I was just telling Sam. No, look, don't you worry. No, no, no. We'll sort something out. Yeah. Yep. Well, I know. Sam Elliott speaking. What? Hi, Bill. How's it well, going? <laughs> yeah, she's fine. Yeah. Oh, I just had my rocks and dad on the Yeah, bench. I know. But look, why don't you call Brett? Yeah. Then I'll call you. Well, That's about five minutes. Yeah. No, no, no. Hang up. Yeah, I'll, I'll call you back. Okay. Bye. Yeah. I don't believe this. Hang on, Bill. Hang on. Sam's trying to say something. What, honey? He promised that account. Hello, Brett. Oh, Sandra, yeah. No, nah, sorry, Bill. Oh, is Brett there? No, no, no. It's a yeah? business problem, I think. Could you wake him up? Yeah. yeah. It's actually kind of important. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, well, Barney's like that. Sam. Uh, hang on, Bill. Sorry. It's... Sam, can you call Sam. that guy? Hello, Brett. Yes, Sally here. Jason rang. Yeah. yeah, I'm sorry about Bill? Sunday, but it's really important. Bill? The revelation account. Shit. Yes. Yeah. Well, look, why don't you call him? I'll call you in, what, about an hour? And we'll compare notes. Hi, Bill. Well, Giselle has all those files. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I can. Yeah, hang on. I'll call her now. Yeah, you just wait a second. Hang on. <laughs> Giselle? Uh, so, oh, sorry, who's that? Oh, sorry. No, no, I think I've got the wrong number. Well, I'll ask Sally. Giselle? Yeah, OK. If you just hang on for a second, Bill. What are you getting upset about? Sorry. Yeah, I know it's Sunday, but I wouldn't call you unless it was urgent. Huh? Yeah, well, perhaps you could just stop doing it just for one minute. Yeah, I'll just catch your attention. Yeah, yeah. Okay, no, fine. Well, you just continue. No, look, I wouldn't want to get between you. Now, look, what? What is it that you want? What? Uh, no, sorry. Brett? No, 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 I'm sorry. I was talking to Sam, sorry. not you. Sorry. Bill and Barney want to know whether we want to come up for dinner for you. Well, for Christ's sake, not now, Sam. I'm in the middle of saving an account here. Yeah, OK, calm down. No. Giselle? Giselle? No, no, it's... it's could you just stop moaning for do, one Bill. moment? No, 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 no. We like oh. Barney. Oh. Carl and yeah. Brad. Jesus, Giselle! How can you do that sort of thing? Well, there's no wonder that you can't concentrate at work these days. The what on earth are you doing to those guys? Brett, sorry. Oh, what, you heard that too? Yeah. I don't know what she's doing. Do you want to talk to her? Yeah. Yeah, I'll try. Hang on a sec. Giselle. Giselle. 
Are you okay? Oh, right, right, yeah. Ultimate passion. Ultimate passion. Okay, right. Yeah. Well, look, Brett wants to talk to you, okay? So just hang on one minute. Okay, Brett, I'm going to try and put you on. Hang on. Your arms. Okay, right. Yeah. Putting you on. It's not you. <clears throat> hey, hang on, Bill. It's Sally again. She wants to... Yeah, just one minute. Hang up your phone. I need to use it. Uh, Bill? Uh, Sally wants to use this phone, too. Yeah, I know she's got two phones of her own, but... <clears throat> no, sorry. Sorry. Okay, bye. Thank you. <sighs> Jason, Sally. Yes, I talked to Brett. Yes, he's on his way over. Mm-hmm. No, he's just got to go and get those files from Giselle. Okay. All right, yeah, I'll call you in about five. Okay, yeah, bye. Hello, Sally speaking. Uh, Sally, it's Sam. Well, where are you? Over to your right. What are you doing? Sally, I've had to use these people's phone. Sally, we've got to talk. Hi, Paula. Haven't seen you for years. Oh, hi, Marcy. We're old school friends. This is Jenny. Hi. What happened here? Oh, a guy in the ice cream van just tried to kill it. Him again? They should ban that old loony from the beach. Yeah. Well, what's Gail doing? Looking for crystals. She's a geologist. She's into rocks in a big way. She's got rocks in her head, if you ask me. <laughs> These rocks are from the Eocene age. This layer here was formed millions of years after the dinosaurs roamed the Earth. Were you alive then? <laughs> no, I was not. Then how do you know? From the fossil records. I mean, how the Bee Gees? <laughs> no, I mean a different sort of record. Like this. An ocean creature of some sort. Perhaps a sea urchin. Well, Tommy laugh. They come later, but you're on the right track. Mm, these rocks are special. This is Marcy. Hello. Hi. Hello. So, um, how's love life? You married yet? Or? Almost. We're engaged. But he's starting to question the relationship. Men can be so difficult sometimes. I wish they'd just do as they were told. Are you going to have any children? After we buy a house. So long as Simon sticks at his job. He keeps threatening he's going to leave. But I don't think it's the right time to go looking for job satisfaction right now. Well, it sounds like you've got things worked out. What's Simon like? No, he's okay. Passable. Well, he's a bit clumsy sometimes. Well, not as clumsy as that guy in the ice cream van, I bet. <laughs> <laughs> I'd call the wedding off if he was. Do you love him? I'm sorry? Do you love him? Well, we've been living together for over a year, so I suppose I do. I mean, we get on all right. Most of the time. And I mean, is anyone really in love? She's a liar. A fucking little liar. Why would Joanna lie about a thing like this? Because she's a bitch. She's jealous. And you're too blind to see it. I just don't believe that. God, it's obvious she's fabricated this whole thing to break us up. She hates the fact that we're so close. And you can't see through her. She's my daughter. I've got to believe her. So you believe her word over mine? Did you do it? Of course not. I couldn't do a thing like that to you. I love you. Oh God, I'll never forgive that little bitch for causing this trouble. I want to believe you. But if what she says is true, I don't see how we can go on. How many times do I have to tell you? I didn't do it. I couldn't do it even if I wanted to. Where would I get the time? Why don't you trust me? I don't know what to think. Just believe me. Why would I lie to you? 
Do you think our love means nothing? Don't let something petty like this come between us. Joanna's my child. I've always believed her, supported her. I don't know how to handle this. Well, it's true then. Everything she told you, it's true. I lied. Is this the truth you're telling me now? You're burning. Have you finished that piece for the journal? Yes. No. Almost. It just needs an ending. I read what you've written. It's good. You're very clever. What is the truth? Come here, sweet. Why would I want to hurt my baby? You know I love you. You know about lying. It's in some people's nature. They can't help themselves. We have something special. That's all that matters. That's the truth. Forget about that pendant. I mean, let's come back down to earth. I mean, it's fortunate nothing but bad luck today. I mean, first off, you've got this idiot chasing you around the beach, being a total sleaze. And then you've got this six-year-old boy who, yeah, was gorgeous, but he's not going to be the guy of your dreams. And then you've got this idiot in the ice cream van who tries to kill us. I mean... Come on, Paula. Why don't you let Gail do things her own way? She just needs to get some self-esteem. And just...
with you without you. I miss you too, my darling. I want to hug you. Oh, yes. Yes, of course. Just keep your hands above the water so that no one suspects. We should be artists together. Oh, be realistic. You have no income, Henry. My husband gives me financial security. How else would I be able to give you money so you can continue writing? We'll be successful writers together, and then we'll be rich. Oh, I have no desire to live in poverty. Just fuck me. Enjoy my body. I want to feel you fucking me. It makes me feel alive. <laughs> Patient. Oh, Dr. Rank. My desires are running out of control. I can't stop fucking. I don't like to cheat on my husband, but I must. I am constantly wet. What can you do for me? There are many psychoanalytic methods for addressing your complaint. Each would be expensive and require many years of therapy. However, there may be an easier method. Perhaps we could go behind those rocks? The rocks? Why not here? Uh, what I have in mind is rather personal. I would not wish the medical complaints tribunal to become involved. No, there's no... Just hang on a minute, will you? The young pile friend. There's some new work to show you. They are in my boat. Perhaps we could swim out and you could give me your reaction? I really should stay here with Walter. Oh, nonsense, my dear. I totally need your advice. You're an artist. I'm just a humble banker. As I was saying, yes, it is imperative that it goes through. And I want you to make sure it does. These poems of love are dedicated to you. I've written them in ink. There are no copies, only this, like you. Original. One day, you will be hailed as a great poet. If you think my work is bad, then I will destroy it and starve myself to death. Oh, my poor darling. Be a pathetic excuse for a poet. Don't get jealous, Henry. I was just reading his poems. Atto needs good positive feedback on his work. That shit. Why bother? He doesn't even have a word processor. One day the world will say your work is just foul mouth pornography. You call this mealy mouth whining crap poetry? My cock writes better poetry. Uh, do you dip it in ink? They are works of passion, Henry. They will not last. They will live forever. You bastard! You ruined my work! It would have ended up here anyway, via the sewers. I've just saved us the discomfort of indigestion. Henry, stop acting like a child. Is there a problem with which I can assist? Henry is behaving like a jealous schoolboy. He has ruined our toes' poetry. Henry is a bad influence on you, Anaïs. He poaches off you. 
a good for nothing. No offense to you, my dear sir. I was merely giving advice to my patient. Have you no ethics? How can you make love to your patients? I get away with it if I don't bulk bill. You talk of ethics. You accept money from another man's wife and make love to her behind his back. At least I satisfy her. You haven't had a decent erection in your life. Anais has told me about your impotence. Henry, Otto is a gentle lover. You are a violent, passionate lover. I have affection for you both. And what about me, Anais? My sexual tolerance for you is related to my desire for my father. You should give me a photo of him. I could look more like him if I tried. Pedophile. American. Old men. Yeah, yeah, we tied it up on the on the twelfth. Yeah, not the tenth, the twelfth. Hang on a moment. What's the problem? Henry and my analyst, Dr. Rank, have showed up. They're fighting. I'm worried about our toe. You must help him, Walter. Yeah, I'm listening. Yeah, I'll be back to you in a moment. Yeah, on the 10th, as I said. You, my darling. I haven't seen you for 15 years. Ever since you abandoned us. Not you, Ines. Not you. Your mother. She was a Puritan. I was an artist. Concert pianist. Highly sexed. My talent would have withered if I'd stayed. I. I didn't mean to hurt you. But I could not be a father to you and an artist. Perhaps you understand that now. Every day and every night I longed for you, hoping you would return. With every lover I have looked for you, no one has ever satisfied me. You and I are... Two of a kind, an ass. They're meant for each other. I want you. I can't make love to you. It's meant to be. I'm scared. Why do I want you like this? All women desire their fathers. It's their first true love. And all men lust after their daughters. Most lack the courage to cross that frontier, afraid of what they may unleash. I knew my mother was not woman enough for you. You needed a more vital spirit. One who said yes to lust. Not one who denied the body. be able to handle this. It's going to be a terrible scene. Better get it over with. You don't know what it's going to be like. Pleading, followed by threats, waterworks, accusations of broken promises, betrayal. God knows what else. I just wish we could be honest with each other. Just tell her the truth, that you don't love her anymore. Are you crazy? I want to come out of this alive, you know. No, I have to come up with a convincing story. You expecting physical violence? It's a possibility, yes. Last time we discussed breaking up, she tried to run me down in the car. She what? Oh, she said it was dark. She didn't see me. 
She said her foot slipped on the accelerator, but I know she saw me. OK. Keep calm. If she hits you, say, thank you, Marcy. I deserve that. <laughs> Jesus, Ben, you make this sound like it's a game. Look, I'm not even sure if I want to break up with Marcy. We mightn't be perfect, but we do have good times together. That's an affair. What you're talking about is commitment for life. That's a different story. That is love. Yeah, OK, OK. Look, don't worry about me. I can handle myself. Marcy, there's something we need to discuss. Uh-huh. I've been thinking and... What are you doing? Packing up. Why? Because I'm leaving. To go home? No, I mean leaving, leaving. Leaving, leaving? Mm -hmm. You mean you're leaving? Yes. Why? Simon, this is difficult for me to say. Believe me. But you see, I don't love you. You don't... What? I mean, in a way, I do. I mean, we have good times together. We laugh, we play. But on a balance, I mean, to get married is a big step. I'm just not sure that you're right for me. So what? This is it? Had to end somehow. I can't believe you'd do this. I can't believe you'd betray me like this. I have to be strong for both of us. I won't let you go. I am stronger than you. All your promises, did they mean nothing? No, but they were just that, promises. Don't leave, we can make a go of it. I have to stop lying. I have to start telling the truth. What's stopping you? You are. Me? I don't get it. Look, I don't want to hurt you. The truth won't hurt me, I seek the truth. If you want to tell me the truth, go right ahead. Hit me right between the eyes, that's the way I like it. OK. I've been sleeping with Kevin. I was going to call it off before the wedding, but now I realise that I enjoy making love to him. More than you. Thank you, Simon. I deserve that. I don't get it. It doesn't make any sense. Is everyone's life like this? Jesus, Ben, will you stop farting? Makes me feel like everyone wants to shit on me. Sorry, better out than in. And cut the crap philosophy. Where did it get me? Out instead of in. That's new. A philosophy on life that actually works. What am I gonna do? I hate being alone. Oh, it's not so bad. How can you say that? I don't want to end up like you, driving an ice cream van up and down on Maslin's on fart power. I should never have listened to you. All that mumbo-jumbo. Marcy was right. You're dangerous. You meddle in other people's affairs because you have none of your own. This business takes up a lot of my time. Bullshit! Nobody can get an ice cream from you half the time. Well, life's more important than a pile of chop. Life sucks. Now I'm going to have to spend lonely nights by myself, getting drunk, dribbling in some girl's ear, passing it off as idle chit-chat, just so I can get my rocks off for a few drunken moments. Things may not have been perfect with Marcy, but at least she was a good lover. That's why Kevin likes her. Fuck you, Ben. Fuck you with a bent pole. You don't know shit about Marcy. Oh, great. Abandon me, just like everyone else. Look, I know you feel terrible right now, but time changes everything. Life will show you the way. Yeah, well, there's a few people with broken ankles that wish life would show you the way.
better out than in. Grandmother was wrong. There is no such thing as magic love, thank God. Don't worry. I can buy another one. I've seen ones just like it at Sports Girl. Come on, let's go. What are we going to do? Hang out here all night? We need one of those metal detectors. Let's just get a fire brigade and the police and everyone out here looking for Gail's necklace. Come on, let's go. You'll never find it now. Position. I'm sorry, um, you know, earlier when I bumped into you, I think I may have dropped something valuable. You can move now. I just didn't want to lose this position in the dark. Is, uh, this what you're looking for? It's not really that important, just something my grandmother gave me. It's beautiful. I was just going. Do you want to get an ice cream? If I had the ice cream van here, I could have given you a lift. I think after your earlier attempts, I'd rather work. <laughs> Jesus. I don't know what came over me. I'm normally a really good driver. Your friends must think I'm an idiot. Yeah. What's your name? Dale.
I'm Reg Livermore. Wednesday night at 7.30 on Our House, a bathroom reno loaded with great ideas. It's veneer to the rescue and a bedside table makeover. We'll get crafty with paper clay photo frames, and then we're off to my kitchen for a hearty bowl of soup. Then on money, car buyers beware. We'll show you how to avoid the trap waiting for all of us, plus your chance to win $10,000. Our House and Money from 7.30 Wednesday night and 8.30 tomorrow night. What seems to be a harmless party prank soon requires careful investigation on the all-new murder call. From the producers of Water Rats and Blue Healers, compelling new drama that gives you the chance to solve the crime. Murder Call, 8.30 tomorrow night. Coming up, Mel Gibson drops into The Late Show.